So what I have here all the way from China is a 501 gaming handheld. I've got a soft spot for gaming handhelds, I must admit that. It's a great way to play retro games. This one is called the SUP SUP Handheld Game 2. And I've got no idea what the first version was like, but it does say that it supports five languages. Chinese, English, I believe that's Arabic, correct me if I'm wrong, Espanol and Portuguese. Now this was sent to me by the good people of Banggood, a popular Chinese marketplace, who have also sent me a hard drive, which we'll review later, and the Ambernick RG350 gaming handheld, which, let's be honest, will be a lot better, but it's also a more expensive option. This is the budget option, and they don't even hide the fact that this is a budget option. I mean, look at the box. It arrives, this, I mean, it arrived all dog-eared and kind of kicked around. It looked like Ace Ventura had been kicking it down the street, but kind of what you expect when you buy something cheap from China. China, as Trump would say. So it retails at just over £12 once you take into the delivery cost there, and it'll take a few weeks to arrive. This is a very cheap solution. Let's make no qualms about that. So my expectations are very low from the beginning. So this kind of translates to about $15.50 or so once you take into, uh, you know, delivery into account, etc. Now, the version that I've got is apparently yellow, but you can get it in red, I believe white, black, grey, and blue as well. Now, if you look at this, we'll switch to the yellow version here. If you look at this, it does resemble a Game Boy Pocket. Clearly, that's what they've tried to copy here, which is no bad thing. The Game Boy Pocket was my first Game Boy, and it's something I have a lot of love for. I didn't have the original Game Boy because my little brother had it, so I didn't have to buy it. But I spent a lot of hours on the Game Boy Pocket, so I do like the form factor. You can see it's got four buttons there. There's a reset button. Um, I think that's a start button, volume, and then there's like USB, etc. at the top. Now, there's actually an L and R button at the back as well. So you can see the battery compartment, and apparently these are L and R buttons, but we will find that out later. So this has got a 1,020 milliamp rechargeable battery, but I've got no idea whether that translates, I mean, does that translate into one hour? Does it translate into 10 hours of battery? We shall see. So let's look at the features here. Built in 500 classical games, <laughs> classical games, okay, to play brings you the happiness from your childhood. That's good. That's what we're all searching for. Um, it's got a three inch screen. It does actually uh, come with AV cables or one AV cable. Allows you to connect to your TV, so that's pretty good. Suitable as a gift to friends, classmates, kids, and so on. So, yeah, I mean, to be honest, that's quite realistic. This is a cheap option, and it's something which you might want to give to kids who don't really know the difference between a good handheld and a bad one. So, um, if you look here, you can see the package weight, 170 grams, 6 ounces, and yeah, there's, there's all the dimensions there. If you scroll down, you can see CGI graphics here. <laughs> don't know why they've not used a picture. But you can see there, L and R key built in 500 games, and here are some images of the games. So you can see Super Mario 2, Sonic, that looks like Aladdin, Turtles there, what we what we would call Probotector in the UK, but it's Contra everywhere else. And I think that's the original uh, tennis game for the Nintendo NES. So most of these games will be like 1983 to about 1990, I guess. So the golden era of 8-bit gaming. So, yeah, it looks quite good here. I'll leave a link to this if you do want to buy it or if you just want to check the specifications and all that, but this is what we're looking at today. Now, before I actually open it up, let's just take a quick look at the box. So, as I was saying, not the best box as far as condition goes, but on the back here, we do have a brief explanation about what the device is like, etc. Digital game system, 3.0 inch wide LCD. The console is slim. Protable. Protable, I was ready to just say portable there. Protable and trendy. Okay. A digital multi-platform device can play on TV. The backlight function of the screen ensures players can play everywhere. So yeah, that was a start button, volume, direction, reset. You've got your game keys, LNR, battery, on off switch, AV out, and a USB for charging at the top here. But I can't really criticize them for their bad English because their English is better than my Chinese. Okay, let's turn this around and we'll get the box open. Well, there's no sellotape, there's nothing keeping this sealed. Got this the right way around, I've got no idea. Okay, nothing else in the box here. So we've got the console, 
which I'll put to the side, and I've definitely got the yellow version. And we've got AV out cables. We've got a user manual, which looks to be all in Chinese and Japanese. Oh, we've got a little bit of English in there as well. So there's a user's manual. I mean, it tells you what the buttons are, but let's be, I mean, this isn't really telling you anything. This is like the worst user manual I've seen in a, in a while. It just tells you what the buttons are, which you probably already know from the back of the box, but there you go. You've got uh, the smallest USB cable in the world, and this looks incredibly cheap. It looks cheap, it looks small, it looks ridiculous. So they've got a micro B cable, it, it doesn't look like this the best quality. I mean, look at that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, but... Um, I guess you can use your own cable for that. Uh, then we've got the battery there, BL5C, and if we look at it there, yes, 1020 milliamps, 3.7 volts, 3.8 watt hours, lithium ion. So, yes, you should be able to find replacements for that. That's that's the good thing about, you know, devices like this because they genuinely, generally use uh, batteries that are common, so you can easily re replace this, perhaps with one which does have better battery life, but we shall see. Right, we've got the boring stuff out of the way. Let's have a look at the console. Okay, let's see what $15 gets you. And this is it. Oh my god. Look at how scratched that is out of the box. My, look at that. I mean, I'll try and get this stuff out of the way so that it focuses on it. But if I bring this up to the camera, maybe it focuses. Look at that. That's just out the box. Literally just out the box. Look at that screen. <laughs> That's absolutely ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Even this, I mean, this is cheap. This is cheap. This is nasty. But this has clearly been used by someone else. I mean, the fact it wasn't sealed, it was all dog-eared. They've sent me something second-hand by the looks of it. Um, yeah. That that's not a good starting point, is it? But yeah, that's ridiculous. I don't I don't remember ever getting a device where it's so scratched at the beginning. So anyway, you've got a D-pad. You've got kind of like the SNES color system they're trying to copy: um, green, blue, red, and yellow, which is strange because they've got a, a yellow color here. But I mean, that's it looks okay actually. You've got your reset, volume, start, and then at the top here, if I do it this way. Uh, you've got your micro B cable, you've got your AV out, and then you've got your on and off switch. Um, which is not going to work, obviously. I don't have the battery in. Um, so then you've got your L and R buttons there. So it's a little bit clearer here. You know, if, if you remember in the picture, it was quite hard to see what was going on with this picture with the L and R buttons. I wasn't sure how they would work, but uh, here, the, the kind of like shoulder button's quite clickable. Can you hear that? It's quite, um, yeah, quite clickable. So, I must admit, the LNR buttons are actually, I mean, that's it's not the greatest way to play a game with LNR buttons like that, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, that's just oozes cheapness, though. I mean, it's just cheap as hell. Cheap as hell. So, let's get the battery in, and we'll see. Let's see how this performs. Oh, it loads up. It loads up. Okay, so let's zoom down. So I have zoomed in, but I'm actually recording this the day after the unboxing because I unfortunately left on an audio filter which I used to remove background noise from my videos. But the downside to that audio filter is that it removed a lot of the game audio which suggested there was a problem with the games or a problem with the system, but there isn't. So I decided to record again. The upside to that is that I now have a better idea as to what this handheld is all about. Take this menu for example, there's four options, there is not five. So at the beginning I said that this supports five languages because, well, that's what the box says, it doesn't. Sorry to anyone from Portugal or Brazil, but Portuguese is not in the menu, so you're going to have to select English or Spanish. Now the other thing is audio, I do have a better understanding of audio now, audio is actually quite loud, it's, it's quite tinny. Now there's actually four levels, you've got mute and then you've got one, two and three. Now right now I've got it in mute because that music was doing my head in, but the annoying thing which I think is annoying is that you go through to the menu like that and you can see the 500 games, and I'll talk about that in a second, but you push this reset button and it'll bring you back to the start, which is quite useful, it's quite useful. 
that it does that because you know you could be game 400 and something and you want to go back to the start it's, it's just easier to hit the reset button now what you probably noticed there as well that is not only does it go back to the main menu for language uh, language selection and, and all that it also resets the audio so you've got mute you've got one you've got two and you've got three now if you leave it at three or you put it to mute and you go through and then you decide to reset the game it will just put the volume back on so that right away is very very annoying i mean it's annoying enough that they don't have a headphone jack they've decided to have an av out jack instead which is kind of silly really when you think about it i mean you're going to really hook this up to a 50 inch tv and sit and play games like that highly unlikely i don't know why they didn't put in a headphone jack here that you could just listen uh, to the game audio game music and all that whilst you're playing the game they've got an av out instead so it's a little bit strange that they've went for that but it's even stranger because if you imagine you're playing this on a train or something and you don't want it to be too loud and then you go back to the menu and the music starts playing again so yeah it's a little bit of a quirk but it is what it is and um, the the speaker is okay you can tell it's a single speaker because you can actually see the speaker port and you can see the speaker underneath and yes it is i'm going to turn that music off uh, it is quite tinny but it's not too bad when you're playing the game you kind of get lost into the game and it, it doesn't seem too bad uh, buttons are quite clicky but they are cheap i mean you can tell they're cheap and when you start playing the game you can tell i mean this isn't a game boy it's not game boy or sony quality when it comes to the d-pad and buttons what do you expect this is like 10 15 bucks to buy um but yeah build quality isn't great we'll talk a bit more of that at the end but with regards to this menu one of the things that you always see in, in chinese cheap handhelds is that they'll say 501 1001 5000 they just add numbers to it now what they usually do is repeat the games and you can see here if you look at contra 24 and 1 super bear bros 3 which as you would expect is super mario 3 now if you go up the way you go to 500 chess spider-man 2 pong pong police versus feet i mean it's just um right so right away what i would say is it, it's annoying having to navigate the menus because it, you know they're separated into pages of eight and you have to go all the way down um like that you can go quickly like that if you want you know it speeds it up you know like that um but i scroll i scrolled through all of these games so I mean reset the music back on and um, I scrolled through all of these games and I just kind of went down like that because I wanted to you know see what each of these games were now you notice at the start Super Bear Brothers 3 and the second page Super Brothers Super Bear Brothers 2 and it, it kind of looks like there's no repeating and it's like that for a while but once you get up to the higher numbers you start to see that some of these games are repeating themselves so yes it says 501 how many of those games are actually you know original as in not being repeated i don't know the legend of cage guess what that is um so yeah so the menu system it, it, it's a bit of an annoying to to navigate because it's not in any particular order there's no real quick way to get to your favorites or anything like that there's no like star system where you can star your favorite games you just have to painfully go through the whole thing and try and find your game which it's definitely annoying if there's a game you like this at like 373 or something like that but yes that is what it is it says 501 i don't know I, I suspect there's actually about 250 real games if i'm honest there is a lot of, most of the games do seem original uh, most of the games do seem to be nes most of them seem to be nes some of them did i think they might be atari i'm not sure um contra it gives you all these different options here but i'll just go into it there push start here we go Good old Concha, or as we called it in the UK, Protector. So I'll put the music back on. There we go. So the audio is back on now. Now, I need to tilt this up a little bit like this, because if I hold it like this, I need to play it essentially through my PC and look at the screen. Hopefully it'll be a little bit better if I play it here. So this is a two-button game, but of course we've got four buttons here. I actually would have preferred just two buttons here. And that, that's one thing that, that I find annoying about this as well, is that, yes, it showed you Sonic. I, I, I haven't seen Sonic. Maybe I skipped past it, but... Um, um, 
I haven't seen Sonic, so my guess is that just about every game that's in this, every game that's in this is a NES game or an Atari game that needed one button or a NES game that needed two buttons. Yeah, you've got, you've got six buttons here. Um, so it actually would have been better just by having two good buttons here rather than these four, four small buttons. They've, I don't know why they've done it. Why, why would you add six buttons to... Why would you add six buttons to this if all the games only use... If all the uh, games only use uh, two buttons? It's kind of silly the way they've done it. But that's me speaking as if they actually spent a lot of time researching this. I mean, it's China. They rush out these things and like... Oh, I'm going to die here. Um, they rush out these things so quickly. Right, so I'm dying a lot in this. Let's reset. Music's back on. Resets to volume 2. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Resets to number 2. Volume 2. Um, let's put on Super Mario. So, you've got some of the the classic NES games, which kind of came out, most of them, you know, when you think of the classic NES games, apart from Legend of Zelda, Zelda and Mario Bros, maybe about 85, a lot of the best games for the, the NES come out in the kind of golden, I would, I would say the golden era was maybe 88 to 90, 91. You know, like Turtles and Super Mario 3 and games like that. It's kind of weird how they've got it like this. Um, most of the games seem to be, uh, most of the best S games are from that period, but you will see a lot of games from this that are like 1983 or even earlier. I mean, they've got, they've got like, um, uh, Galaxy and, and, and Pac-Man and all these kind of older games on it. And there was a lot of Atari ports. Um, there was a lot of Atari ports when the, when the NES first came out, but which one's the run button? I keep... Which one? I'm trying to figure out the run button for some reason I can't. So this is the thing. See, see, because there's four buttons here, it's kind of awkward I find with this control. It just doesn't feel comfortable. Oh, oh, oh it's that's the run button. What am I doing? I think the buttons are back here. Maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong here, but I think the buttons are back to front here. It's been a while since I played the original. Um, it's not usually that's run and that's jump, isn't it? Yeah, I, I feel they've got it back to front. I may be wrong here, but I feel like the, the button is actually back to front. Because if you remember the Nintendo, they had it B and then A. They had it B then A. And I think they've got A then B. So, yeah, from a control point of view for NES games, it kind of feels backward. And there's no configuration here. There's no settings area where you can actually map these buttons and change how these buttons are mapped. You know, and say, like, make this B, make this A, or make this anything. Um, I'll scroll through some of the games here, just to give you a better idea of some of the games here. And the good thing is, you've got a lot of your classic games here. Double Dragon, Double Dragon 2. Double Dragon 2 is one of my favourite NES games now. Again, this button thing became annoying, because instead of that being the left punch button or the right, because Double Dragon 2... If I'll just show you, it's easier to just show you this. But this game worked out a kind of weird fighting system, where it was like you know, the, depending on the direction you were going, you punched or kicked the same direction, but it changed it from a punch to a kick. Now, I'll show you what I mean just now, and this is the annoying thing about the, the buttons being backwards. So, like, right button, I'm going left. So, I need, I need to... Do you see how that's always going to be the right button? So, even if I go that way, it just changes it to a kick, but it's still going that right direction. Um, and that's going that way. Now, that's because these buttons are, are not the right way. Really, it should be that should be right and that should be left. So they've mapped the map the, the they've mapped these buttons back to front. So, I mean, it, you'll get used to it. Don't get me wrong; you will get used to it if you play this enough. But it, it's just annoying because obviously a lot of these games were designed for the B and A button. So you intuitively think, well, I'm going that way; it should be left to punch, but you're. You're going the other way. As far as the emulation goes, though, I mean, these games do seem to be playing quite well. You know, as far as that's how I remember Double Dragon. It's just an emulation. I mean, they've just got the emulated ROM. Um, so there's no problem there. Again, going back to this menu music, it, it, it really is annoying after a while when you're constantly refreshing, going back to the menu, re resetting, and you hear that music again. But there's the only way to mute it is to go down like that, but you probably noticed that earlier on, 
uh, earlier on when I went into Contra is that when I mute that, I, you go into the game and that's muted as well. <laughs> it's just ridiculous the way that it's set up. And it's one of those things, you know, it, it's just a, it's a minor thing, but it's kind of annoying after a while, if I'm honest. The Legend of Cage. Oh, I've never heard of this, actually. I thought it was going to be The Legend of Zelda. So, um... Okay, let's let's skip. We'll skip through here. Now, as I said, I kind of went through all of these because I wanted to see... Really, I just wanted to see how often the games were repeating themselves. But you can see there's a lot of classic NES games here. As far as emulated games go, this is just an emulated NES device. And you've got some of the classics there. Uh, Super Mario Bros. or Super Bear Brothers, obviously because of copyright reasons or something. Um, you've got um, Ninja Gaiden 1 and 2, Chip and Dale, that was a fantastic game as well. Mighty Final Fight, that's a nice little kind of, um, well it's kind of like Streets of Rage kind of thing. Well, Final Fight of course, you know Final Fight. Um, Excite Bike, that's one of the earlier Nintendo games as well. A lot of Chinese chess games, Five Chess, Mahong, Kung Fu, uh, Ice Climber. And Donkey Kong, those are early games as well. So, you know, you've got some of the later games there, like, uh, like Super Mario 3, but there's a lot of games that, you know, 83, 84, 85, Kung Fu, which my parents actually had to pay about 30, 40 pounds for me when they bought this for me for my NES. This is a game I always show when I play retro game <laughs> uh, handhelds just because of how much I like it. Now, this one's a little bit better. The punch and kick isn't, you know, mapped to the direction that you're going, so it works a little bit better. But normally, normally I think that would be the punch, I think. Oh. It's all about distance in this game. The first level is actually pretty easy. Uh, it's the next levels where they start throwing you things at you. That was bad. Just kind of run away and do the, the slidey thing. That kind of technique there works in most of the, the bad guys in this. As far as you kind of dodge them and then just go up and just quickly sweep or kick. Right, I'll, I'll quickly do the next level and then I'll jump. I just want to show you a few games just to show you, you know, what's available in this. As far as the actual games go, as I said, they've just used uh, used the emulated ROMs, so they'll have uh, a little bit of... Um, uh, oh, I can't think and play the game at the same time. My brain doesn't work. Um, yeah, they've clearly just used the uh, ROMs they've taken from the internet, etc. Which is no bad thing. I'm not going to do this. Um, let's see what other games we've got here. So, you'll see what I mean now about some of these older games, and if you're familiar with any games from the early 80s, um, you'll you'll notice a lot of the games. I mean, a lot of these games you would have seen in the Atari, the ColecoVision and that type of thing. I think some of these were official early ports of Atari games that went to the NES, and I think some of them might have just been from third-party developers, maybe even games that we never saw in the West. I mean, you just see it, there's a lot of these, I mean, it's certainly some of them are, are renamed. Um, Galaga Plus, Pack Packland. There you go, Pack Packland. 2000, this one actually says 2000, oh, I'm quite surprised at that actually. So this is maybe a port that someone's developed for the NES, later on. You know, maybe they've developed it as a fan game or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, game selection is probably one of the most annoying things about this because the games are just in no order whatsoever. It's not alphabetical order, it's not release date order, it's not ordered by, you know, quality or anything like that. Um, it's, yeah, it's just in the order that it's in. I mean, look at this. What we... What is going on? I'm, I'm not even going to... I'm not going to waste my time with that one. Right, let's find another game or two that's actually decent. Um, Hot Blood Wrestle... I think, like, like the original Mario Brothers would come out 
I think that came out in like 1983 or something, and that's like in 150 or something, you know, it's kind of tucked away in the middle of the list. Um, golf. This is, alongside, alongside Kung Fu, uh, you know, I got the Mario Brothers Duck Hunt package when I was younger. This was actually one of the first games I bought for the NES as well, alongside Kung Fu. And um, this is actually a really good game. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I can assure you I have played this before, um, despite the fact that I'm doing that. How do you play this again? It's been so long. There we go. All right, right, that's why. Right, okay. So you go up, push it, and then push it again. Right. It's been so long since I've played this. Um, see, when you get into this, this is actually quite a fun wee game. Um, despite the fact I'm terrible, it's going to be an OB. Yes. Um, I'm terrible at these games. I'm blaming some of this on the fact I'm behind a microphone and looking at stuff on the PC and stuff, but I'm just really bad here. Out of bounds again. Oh, come on. <laughs> right, that's enough of me ter being terrible at that game. Um, th I can't even blame this on the, on the handheld. I really can't blame this on a handheld. Right, one more. I'll just pick one of the earlier ones. Um, final mission. I just want to see which one that is. Because they renamed them, you're, it's not... Alright, that is final mission. 1990. I'm not familiar with this game, actually. Well, this is a little sure. This is that. This actually looks pretty good, actually. Looks like a Gradius type of Concha style game. I don't know. I'm going to die just now, just like I've died in every game here. I'm t I'm being I'm quite bad here. This actually looks like it could be quite fun. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Oh, I'm going up the way now. I thought it was just going to be a horizontal scroller, but we're going both ways. Okay. It's probably good that I've died here. So I'm going to set this down for a second because I think you've seen me playing games badly enough. So I just want to summarize my thoughts about all of this. Right. From a game playing point of view, I'm kind of, I've kind of got mixed feelings with it because whenever I play some of these games, because I grew up with them, because I love them and I've got so much, you know, happy nostalgic memories for some of these games, I kind of get sucked into it and I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I do enjoy it. But, you know, this is obviously a very poor device. Uh, you know, you get what you pay for here. I'm not saying you're being ripped off at 15 bucks. I don't think you are really. Uh, the audio is loud. I'll say that about it. The audio is loud, but it's tinny. You've got one single speaker there. Uh, the build quality is, well, it, it, it's cheap and it's plastic. One thing I will say is that it's a little bit lighter than what they quoted. If I bring over my scales here, it gets any focus, which is, I'll put this here. A um, hundred and, I think it should be lighter than that actually. 104, I think I had it 103 yesterday, but anyway, 104 grams. And that is 3.7 ounces. So, yeah, this this isn't a heavy device. It's super, super light. So, in comparison, for example, my Game Boy Micro is 89. So, just just a little bit heavier than a Game Boy Micro. Not much, basically. It's, it's very light. Very, very light. Let's get in focus. Okay, so the build quality is quite bad. And you can see it in a number of areas. Firstly, the screen. The fact that this was delivered with a screen which is all scraped like that as, let's be honest, that's unacceptable. Maybe I've been unlucky. Maybe other people, you know, have got a device, a brand new one, which was all sealed up and it was fine, but it's kind of inexcusable that that was sent like that. It's, it's disappointing. And, you know, at first I was like, is there a screen protector on? Is there something wrong there? No, that is what it's like. That is what it's like. And I'd have to replace this whole screen. I'm sure I could, but what's the point of me paying like $5 to get a replacement screen replace it all myself when you could just buy another one. Um, I mean, as far as the, the build quality goes, the whole design of this is just rushed and... I mean, even just look at the side there, you can see, you know, the, the cool way the light's bleeding out there. And you can actually see through the device at parts. I mean, you can actually see the insides. 
It's only four screws to get this open actually, so it wouldn't be difficult to open it up, but I mean, you can see, you can actually see the screen there. So build quality is poor, build quality is poor. Um, for $15, if you're going to give this to a kid or something, I can see why someone would buy this because it's very cheap. Battery life actually seems okay. I played it about an hour or so yesterday. I've played it about half an hour or so today, about an hour maybe. And yeah, I've not had to charge it yet since it's come out of the box. So battery life, I've got no idea what it is if I'm honest. I've not had to charge it yet, but battery life does seem okay. I guess no surprise. I mean, it's it, the battery does, does seem to be a decent size and it's not a big screen. And these games aren't really using a lot of resources, so battery life should hopefully be a couple of hours. Um, but just the buttons and things like that, you know, I can kind of... I'm, I'm more annoyed with the, the buttons being back to front than I am with the buttons not being high quality. The D-pad isn't too bad, really, for these kind of older games, but the annoying thing is that you can't map the buttons. There's no settings area, there's no configuration area where you can change that. So that is a little bit annoying. And it's not like the manual helps you here. You know, the manual just tells you what the buttons are for. Do you know what I mean? Game key, direction key. Yeah, it doesn't really tell you anything there. Um, and you've... Oh, go back here. Um, oh, that's starting the game, that one. Um, the back buttons, I mean... Why are these back buttons here? It's kind of weird. I just find it weird that they've put in these back L and R buttons, which are, you know, clearly they're, they're you know, they're acting like a start button almost there. Um, yeah, it's acting. Yeah, it's acting like a start button. Uh, it's kind of weird that they've decided to put in six buttons here when every single game here requires one button or two buttons. So why has this thing got six buttons? It's not like it's got a micro SD card that you can add in, you know, more games. You can download more games. This, you know, what you've got here is what you've got. You've got these 500, let's just say 500, give them the benefit of doubt, despite the fact a lot of them are repeated, but let's just give them the benefit of doubt and say that these, um, you know, these games are original and they're, all, they're not repeating, but 500 games and they've given you six buttons, despite the fact that all of these games only need one button or two buttons. It's just kind of weird that, you know, they've just rushed it, putting the that back to front. The fact that all these games come out in the NES and they've still decided to not even look into which way these buttons go. And it is annoying as well. I find that, you know, it, it, just the fact you've got four small buttons here, you're, you kind of lean to there for B and A, but you've not got that. You've got this kind of SNES layout and it, it worked okay in the SNES, but it just doesn't work here. So the games are really good. The, the, the single solo speaker isn't that bad, actually. It's tinny, but it's not too bad. It's the audio is not a problem. It's a little bit weird that you don't have a headphone jack, you've got AV out, but yeah, it's just kind of a mishmash of everything not syncing well together. It's a cheap device. If you're looking for something for a kid, maybe this is what you'd want to go for, but I don't know. I think I think there's a good argument. I think there's a good argument for just spending a little bit more. I mean, a lot of the original devices you know, original gaming handhelds and things like that, you can pick them up at a very low price now. And there's gaming handhelds like this out, 40, 50 pounds. Older Game Boys like that, maybe you can pick them up like 30, 40 as well. And then you can get a flash cart or something. For some people, if you just want to give something to a kid and you don't want, you know, you don't want them breaking anything, you don't care about it, you don't care about the screen, you just want them to sit and play a game. Like I'm talking under fives here, then maybe you should get something like this. I think for most other people, though, you'd be disappointed. I think you would be disappointed. It's not bad, though. I mean, there, there are a lot of games. This is why I'm torn, because there's a lot of great games in here. That's the thing. There's a lot of great games here. But the retro gaming handheld market is very competitive, and there's a lot of devices like this out there at the same price point, and some a little bit more expensive, and you're getting a lot more quality. You're getting a proper screen, you're getting configuration options, and you're getting a better selection of games and all that. So, so, yeah, it, it's not something I'd, I'd advise people to rush out and get. So if you're looking for something super, super cheap, super cheap, like $10, $15 cheap, then maybe this is something that you want to get. But I, I would definitely say this is poorly implemented. You get what you pay for here, let's, let's be honest, you get what you pay for here. The buttons are back to front, the speaker's tinny, the build quality is cheap and plastic, and yeah, it's, it's just a little bit frustrating.
But on the plus side, there's a lot of games in this, and I must admit, I did have fun. When I actually got into a game and I started playing, it was fun. It was fun, and that's why I'm a little bit torn. I I, I don't think I can re- recommend this to anyone, but if, if you only want to spend like 10 bucks or 15 bucks or something, and you really don't want to spend an extra 10 or 20 or 30 dollars, maybe you'd want to go for something like this. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've got a better understanding as to what this can do and what accessories you get and all that. USB cable, AV out cable. <laughs> Why has this got AV out? I don't know. But I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. And stay tuned because I will be reviewing something which is a lot better. This is going to be a lot better than this 501. So please stay tuned for that review. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching and take care.